Welcome to Bitcoin Advisors. Welcome back to the Bitcoin Advisors channel. We're going to jump into some price action right here and now and get down deep and dirty into this price action. And what are we talking about? Bitcoin potentially making a higher low as we spoke of as long as we don't break this last daily higher low. Well, the uptrend is your friend until the end of the trend. And what else do we have on the board? What do we what do we have on the board? Well, um, we've got some news and I thought I'd just little play this little clip for you. Tell you that's half the bond market is having a melt. Here are five of Warren Buffett's top lessons. That is not what I wanted. Here's how Bitcoin is well, everybody. Well, well, oh, oh, well. Let's let's go through all of Chris's dang it. Let's not. Let's go to what I was looking for. Grit capital, which you guys drop them a follow. They're super cool, uh, super cool finance channel blowing up. And they had a nice little pitch about the bond market. Look at Warren Buffett shrugging his shoulders. Bond market. Here we go. Dan, history is literally being written. And if you're an investor, you have to understand this. The drop in value that's happening in the bond market right now is mm. almost as bad mm. as the drop in value in the stock market during the 2008 financial crisis and the dot com. Why is this happening? Well, let's quickly go over what happened over the last couple of years. We had the pandemic. Then we had the, an unprecedented the amount of money injected into the economy over 13 inflation, trillion, And then inflation soared out of control. Mm. And then the Fed increased interest rates at the fastest pace in over 40 years. In and now the bond market is selling off hard. Why? TLT. Dumping. Value of bonds go down. And now I can't believe I'm saying this, but the drop in 10 year and 30 year bonds is approaching the epic drops we saw in stocks during the 2008 financial crisis and the dot com bubble bust. 10 year bonds are down 46% versus 49% for stocks during the dot com crash, and 30 year bonds are down 53% versus 57% during the stock sell off in the financial crisis. These losses in long maturity debt are literally rewriting history. They more than doubled the previous largest drop back in 1981 when Fed Chair Paul Volcker fought inflation, pushing 10-year yields to nearly 16%. And here's another number just to drive the point home. These losses are overshadowing the average 39% drop in stock markets over the last seven U.S. equity bear markets going back to the 1970s. Bonds are facing their own crisis right now. What's my take? Well, my take is that half or more of near retirees and retirees have their money invested in bonds. And if they can hold to maturity, great. There's no problem. They're not going to have a loss. But if they are forced to sell the bonds before they mature to pay for retirement because maybe they're retiring earlier or maybe because the cost of retirement has gone up significantly because of inflation, um, there could be some potential big losses for these investors. Um, but if the Fed stops raising rates and eventually cuts rates again uh, in the next 12 months, some of these potential losses will be reduced or potentially wiped out. So only time hmm. will tell. But right now, it's a bloodbath. The bond market is... That's enough of that. Let's jump into that price action. Uh, Bitcoin mounting an assault. This is what I would call the famous cup. The famous cup, which is denoted like this when you get a breakout right here. So everybody looking at this as a bit of an ascending triangle, which does have a more likely chance of breaking out to the upside, um, broke out on a candle by a closing basis, did not take out the wick, however, of this high volume vector candle. And that's what you want to see for continuations. Uh, daily closure back above this pivot would confirm this as a higher low Likely sending price action all the way up to 30,000, 30,000 bucks. Um, you know, close enough is close enough. If we get anywhere near that box, this little box of peace and prosperity and death and despair, well, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. It is, what am I saying? It's going to be great. We're going to be partying to the moon. Actually, we want to see Bitcoin clear this level. And so, Higher term time frames, let's check it out. Volatility is increasing. Oh, what do you know? We are about to make the second attempt into the bullish control zone. 
So as long as we do not confirm this as a local high over the weekend, likely uh, better than not uh, circumstances should, you know, happen for Bitcoin. You had Arthur Hayes being interviewed yesterday talking about Bitcoin hitting on 750,000. Um, I think I think it'll go to a million bucks over the next 10 years. He's talking about, I think, over the next couple of years. Why? Well, did you hear how she said this is like bigger than the dot com bubble burst? What happens when the market crashes? What happens? What happens? What does the Fed do? You know the answer. Where do they get all the money? They print it out of thin air. They take it from the people who saved like me and you, and they inject it into the stock market. Mortgage-backed securities and bonds, right? So bonds are taking a huge loss, and here's why it's a bigger crisis than the dot-com bubble. The bond market is bigger than the stock market. And all your precious little banks, all your little banks, what do they hold mostly? Bonds. Right, so they're getting smacked on the shoulders, smacked in the face, whatever you want to call it. Anyways, uh, RSI coming back up. If the RSI does get back in the bullish control zone, which is this little blue area right here, that would be very, very good for the bulls. Very good, very good. We uh, just don't want to see that bearish divergence come into play again. So market has been very volatile on the shorter term timeframes, especially this morning. Uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but thankfully um, I didn't get wiped out. Some people definitely got wiped out. Uh, let's talk about two day volatility. We were keeping an eye on this one here. Now it's declining. So are we gonna get some more sideways price action over the weekend? Probably. Or we could have another Sunday afternoon melt up. <clears throat> and why is this good for Bitcoin? You might say, well, if the economy is going to crash, why is this good for Bitcoin? Look, when the banks failed, let's take a look at some of those banks really quick. When the banks failed, what happened to Bitcoin? Rallied to the moon, rallied to the moon, up 100% this year almost. Where are my banks? Bank stock, XLF. Let's take a look. Wouldn't want to be holding that one. Uh, not financial advice. Not a financial advisor. Definitely not. How's NVIDIA doing? Ooh, new all-time highs. A little bit of a flying W or whatever you want to call that. That's looking good. Microsoft popping back up. I don't think this one is going to continue. Uh, this looks like a very nice... Area to sell, but but we are bouncing off the green 55 with what kind of volatility? If volatility is low and expanding actually above 25%, it was low, it was low right here, and now it's expanding. As momentum is crossing back to the upside, so scratch that, right? We could just blast right off, but three touches makes a trend. So let's see what, um, what I was looking for. Oh, the... the the forever down charts. Look at this. This was First Republic Bank. They don't even have Silver Bank anymore. It's gone Silver, Silver Bank, whatever it was called. Look at this one. SVB, bailed out by the government. Guess what? If the banks failed, don't worry. They're going to give you bank stock. The Dodd-Frank Act. But what they really did is they just printed money, right? So Let's mark this day on the calendar here. Boom. March 2023. Uh, March 8th. Let's see if those are the same days. March 8th. Okay. Ooh, S. Signature Bank. Ooh. I guess those bank stocks might not be as good as holding Bitcoin. Um, but let's just reference what happened to Bitcoin. So that was the 28th. So they were a little bit later than the others. What is the other banks doing? Bank of America. What is that? 
Went from 26 bucks down to 13. Not bad, Bank of America. To be fair, looks like it could bounce here. How's Coinbase doing? Coinbase is probably going to do whatever Bitcoin does, making higher lows and higher highs on the two-day time frame. Confirming a higher low right here would uh, definitely give you a shot back up to this area, maybe. Um, Costco. You know, food prices are going up. Roku. Oh, that looks bad. Anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into the 28th. That's, that's what we said. March 8th and the 28th. Let's just look at what Bitcoin did. Let's take a look here. Deep dive into the Bitcoin chart on the 28th of March. What was Bitcoin's price? Mm, maybe it tanked for what? Maybe it tanked a little bit first, right? But March 28th, or March 8th, March 8th, what happened? Bitcoin bottomed, and the preceding two-day chart after led to a nice little rally to the moon, right? People are getting it. People are figuring it out. You want to own your own money, you don't leave it at the bank, that's for sure. What happened on the 28th? Let's see, 28th, March 28th. So a little more pump, right? Bitcoin, Bitcoin does a 57% rally there. And from the 28th on. So as Je Jeff Gunlock was saying, I'll play you the video another day here. Jeff Gunlock was saying, look, the dollar is going to become worthless. We can't pay the interest on our debt. Debt to GDP is going to go over 200%. They're going to print so much money. It's going to make COVID look like Disneyland. So that's why you want to own some Bitcoin. That is why, as we've been saying, probably one of the best buying opportunities of the year. Now, here's what I can say, though. Until proven otherwise, Bitcoin's still going to be correlated to the NASDAQ, which the NASDAQ did not totally fulfill the gap fill on the daily time frame. But close enough is close enough. This is bullish. This is a W. If we close anywhere here or higher today, I'm looking for a minimum shot back to the top side of the range right there. And a break above there is going to be even better. With the volume pouring in like that, what happened? Oh, I hit the pencil. That's what happened. Volume pouring in, low volatility. Um, I'm kind of, I'm kind of uh, torn between the two on this one. But like I said, Technically speaking, what does a W look like, guys? What does a W look like? Higher low and a close above the middle peak. Second target right there. So if volatility begins to expand on the daily time frame, getting out of the bearish control zone, and we just continue to stay above 14,795, which we're a long ways away from there right now, that's going to be good. What's happening on Dixie? Well, I guess I was wrong, or I said, I actually said the 21 was going to be the target if we confirm this as a local high. Why you're going to have two drives of bearish divergence where price is making lower highs, one, two, and the RSI is making uh, higher highs. Yep. So let's just confirm it by dragging this guy. No, I don't think I'm wrong. I'm. I'm only wrong when I'm talking to my girlfriend, right? <laughs> uh, one, two. Yeah. So the bottom line is the target was the 21 off of this divergence right here. Boom. One, two. Two to the 21. And now that we are leaving the bullish control zone, if you see the moving average come down out of this zone, this kind of read right here, which I will draw you a fancy little circle. That's what it looks like for correction time. That's what it looks like for correction time. Uh, same kind of pattern goes across the board when it comes to uh, the RSI. All right. So at the moment, 
what do I think is going to happen on Bitcoin? Probably some sideways action over the weekend. Uh, another kind of slightly bullish thing. I don't know. This this could be a fake out. It could be people getting stopped out. Well, that that definitely was people getting stopped out. People going short here, and then they rammed it in everybody's face. But again, W target here. <clears throat> And we closed above the middle peak on on the four hour time frame. So boom, boom, higher low, closed above the middle peak. And the conservative traders are gonna wait for this. Boom. Right? And enter here or here. Which I'm more conservative, guys. If you know anything about me, I'm very conservative. I'd be waiting for a little bit more of a higher low, not trusting the weekend price action, not knowing what's ahead of us coming with economic data uh, going out next week. What else do I see on the hourly time frame? And this on Ethereum was the big, uh, and this kind of pattern, the snake eyes, right? High volume reversal candles like this. Boom, red, green, and off to the races. So, Technically speaking, we broke the 55 consolidation, looking for some more rises going into next week. Um, maybe a slight pullback as you're going to have some stochastic divergence coming from this high to this high. No, you won't. From this high to this high. So how would we confirm this as a local high on the hourly? <coughs> Closing back below this wick, 27.795. And then I would be targeting this little blue candle right here. Again, if you want to get this indicator right here, it is called the PVSRA underscore VS. Very, very helpful in identifying volume candles, where to put your stop losses, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Cardano, Cardano, Cardano. Um, don't really want to look at this one. The one I wanted to bring our attention to because I've been talking about a lot about it with our guys in the Discord is uh, this guy right here. Clear little breakdown. We were talking about the full retrace happening all the way from back here. Where's the full retrace come? Down here. So I don't know if it's going to play out over the weekend. I don't know if it's going to play out, period. But here's how I would know that it's not likely to happen uh let's see is that the one i want so remember as the dollar goes down risk assets will go up so after a monstrous rally hitting the not 0.5 getting a short-term pullback again my kind of bias was that uh, the dollar was going to have a little bit more of a leg higher um but this is how this is how I'm looking at this here. So you can see massive kind of descending triangle on the hourly time frame. And a lot of people probably have it drawn out like this. BSV, three points of contact, makes a trend. Right, so drawn out like this, and the measure move off of something like this from the 50 percentile. It's going to go like this. Measure move. Target initiated, and this is your cup on the op opposite side. So grabs the liquidity, and as long as your first warning will be a closure back in this area. Your second warning, I mean, out, 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 in my opinion, in my book, up here. So let's say you missed the trade. Let's say you did not get a chance to short up here or short up here or up here. We've been milking this one for uh, the, whole, the whole week. It's been very, very nice. Um, well, you're pretty darn close to uh, the retest. That would have been, you know, your entry if you are looking for this one to continue. But you might consider this a continuation area. So as long as we are closing below 36.11 on the hourly time frame, I'm expecting more downside. Um, you know, that's your 
uh, candle body closure exit, but on a wick basis, stop loss, static stop loss up there at 36.86. Again, not financial advice, not a financial advisor. I hope everything is finding you well. I hope you have a blessed and highly favored weekend. I'm looking forward to getting back to you guys next week to see what happens with the price action. And I guess I will just do this last little thing and post it in Discord so everybody can see. And like I said, full retrace all the way down to, uh, where does it usually go? It goes to the high volume candles. So uh, this one here or this one here. So TP1, TP2 right there. And I think I'm going to leave you with that. Have yourself a blessed and highly favored rest of your weekend. We will see you next week. Take care.